In this video, we will be finding equivalent fractions. Equa, E-Q-U-I, means the same thing as equal. So what we're really doing is finding equal fractions. For example, one-half is equal to two-fourths. Two-fourths is equal to four-eighths. So one-half is equal to two-fourths, and it's equal to four-eighths. So we would say that these three fractions are equivalent. So why do we need to know how to find equivalent fractions? Sometimes we're going to want to add fractions or subtract fractions, but they don't have common denominators. So in this problem, we have a denominator of 3 and a denominator of 9. We know that those need to be the same in order to add them. So we can use multiplication or division to find equivalent or equal fractions. So here we would take this 1 third and we would change it so that it matched the fraction over here. We can do that by using multiplication. We can multiply by 3 in the denominator and 3 in the numerator. Now, when we're finding equivalent fractions, it's important to remember that whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do the same thing to the numerator. So, we would multiply the numerators. 1 times 3 is 3. And we would multiply the denominators. 3 times 3 is 9. Now we have changed one-third to three-ninths. One-third and three-ninths are equivalent fractions. They have the same value, they just look different. So now we could add that three-ninths to the four-ninths, and we would do three plus four is seven, and our denominator stays the same. The new fraction that we made is equivalent or equal to the old fraction because all that we did was multiply by one or a whole. Three thirds is the same as one because three out of three is a whole. So multiplying one third by three thirds is essentially multiplying one third by a whole or one, which then gives us the new fraction of three ninths. The first way that you can find equivalent fractions is by using the multiplication rule. So the multiplication rule, all that you're going to do is you're going to multiply a whole or one to find an equivalent fraction. So let's start with an example. Let's say that we had the fraction 4 ninths and we wanted to use the multiplication rule to find an equivalent fraction. All that we're going to do is we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by a whole. So it could be any whole. You could pick 3 out of 3, you could pick 4 out of 4, you could pick 20 out of 20, it could be 1,000 out of 1,000. As long as you multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same numbers, you're going to find a new equivalent fraction. So let's just use 3 over 3. So let's multiply the numerators. 4 times 3 would be 12, and 9 times 3 would be 27. So an equivalent fraction to 4 ninths would be 12 twenty-sevenths. Let's try another example. Let's say that we had the fraction 5 sevenths and we wanted to use the multiplication rule to find an equivalent fraction. Let's multiply by 10 over 10. Multiply the numerators, 5 times 10 is 50. Denominators, 7 times 10 is 70. And we've now found an equivalent fraction. 5 sevenths is equivalent to 50 seventieths. And again, all we did was multiply by a whole or by 1. 10 out of 10 would be a whole, which is equal to 1. This is going to be question 1 on your homework. So please go ahead and pause the video, read the question, solve, and then go enter your answer onto the online homework. The second way we can find equivalent fractions is by using the division rule. So let's say we had a larger fraction, something like 24 30 seconds. We're going to think of a number that we could divide both the numerator and the denominator by to get an equivalent fraction. So I know that 8 goes into 24 and that 8 goes into 32. So I'm going to divide by 8 over 8. Again, 8 over 8 is a whole. It's equal to 1. So all, we're, all we are doing is dividing this fraction by 1 or a whole. So we divide the numerator. 24 divided by 8 is 3. And we divide the denominator. 32 divided by 8 is 4. 
So now we found an equivalent fraction. 24 30 seconds is equivalent to 3 fourths. Those are equal or equivalent fractions. Let's try another one. Let's say that we had the fraction 60 90ths and we wanted to find an equivalent fraction. Well, I know that 3 goes into 60 and I know that 3 goes into 90. So I'm going to divide by 3 over 3. Remember, whatever I do to the numerator, I have to do to the denominator. 60 divided by 3 is 20, and 90 divided by 3 is 30. So I've now found an equivalent fraction. 60 90ths is equivalent to 20 30ths. This is going to be question 2 on your online homework, so go ahead and pause the video here, read the question, and enter your answer onto the online homework. So, like I said before, we can find or use equivalent fractions to add and subtract fractions. Most of the time you're going to see a fraction in these problems where only one fraction could be changed or edited so that you could solve the problem. So looking at the first problem, 2 thirds plus 7 twelfths, there is a fraction here that we could use the multiplication rule for to solve this addition problem. So 2 thirds can be changed or multiplied to have the same denominator as 7 twelfths. So let's take the fraction 2 thirds and let's think about how could we multiply 3 or what could we multiply 3 by to get to 12. We can multiply 3 by 4 and whatever we do to the denominator we have to do to the numerator. So let's multiply the numerators. 2 times 4 is 8. Let's multiply the denominators. 3 times 4 is 12. So we have now found an equivalent fraction 2 thirds is equivalent to 8 twelfths. And now we can solve this addition problem pretty easily. We're going to take 8 twelfths and we're going to add it to 7 twelfths. And 8 plus 7 is 15 and our denominator stays the same. 15 twelfths would be our answer. This is an improper fraction so it could be turned into a mixed number in order to simplify. Alright, down here. Now tip Technically, we could use smiley face crisscross to solve this because we know that when denominators are different, we can use smiley face crisscross to solve those fraction problems. But there's actually an easier and faster way to solve this problem. We're going to use multiplication rule to just change one fraction instead of changing both fractions. So let's take 11 twelfths. And what can we multiply 12 by to get to 48? We can multiply 12 by 4. And whatever we do to the denominator, we must do to the numerator. So 11 times 4 is 44, and 12 times 4 is 48. So we've now found an equivalent fraction for 11 twelfths. 11 twelfths is the same as 44 48 And now we can subtract. 44 48 is going to replace 11 twelfths, and we're going to subtract 1 48. So 44 minus 1 is 43, and our denominator stays the same. And this fraction is in simplest form, so that would be your final answer. Go ahead and pause the video. This is question 3 on your online homework. Read through the question, and then go enter your answer onto your online homework. In your journal pages, you're going to see a lot of problems like this where there's an empty box and you need to solve what would go into the empty box. So these are the equivalent fractions. So what you're going to do is you're going to think about what did they multiply 5 by to get to this 10. 5 times 2 is 10 and whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. So 3 times 2 is 6. So the equivalent fraction for 3 fifths is 6 tenths. Let's try this one. How did they get from 55 to 5? This time they used the division rule. They divided by 11. 55 divided by 11 is 5. So whatever we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator. 44 divided by 11 is 4. So the equivalent fraction for 44 55ths is 4 fifths. Okay, for this problem, we're going to think about how did they get from 1 to 7. So we're going to go from right to left this time. They did 1 times 7 equals 7. So 1 times 7 is 7. So down here, we're going to do 8 times 7, because whatever we do to the numerator, we have to do to the denominator. And 8 times 7 is 56. 
So 7 56 is equivalent to 1 8. Last problem, how did they get from 3 to 12? 3 times 4 is 12. So whatever we do to the numerator, we have to do to the denominator. 10 times 4 is going to give us a denominator of 40. So 3 tenths is equivalent to 12 fortieths. This is question four on your online homework, so go ahead and pause the video here and answer this online. Type in your answer and then come on back to the video. The last thing we're going to talk about is recognizing equivalent fractions. So sometimes you're going to get a question on, maybe on the test at the end of the year, the MCA, or maybe on your map test, or maybe even in your math journal, and it's going to say which fraction is, or which fractions are equivalent to four sixths, or it might be a different fraction that it's asking you. So your job is going to be to look at all the different choices and figure out, hmm, which ones are equal or equivalent to four sixths. So let's just go through all the choices, starting with one fourth. Is there any way to get from four sixths to one fourth? Well, we could divide this numerator in four sixths by four to get us a one on top, but when we divide the denominator by four, we're not going to get that four. So this doesn't work. So let's try one third. Let's go to the next one, one third here. Is there any way to get from four sixths to one third? Well, we can, again, we can divide by four on top to get us to a one, but when we divide by four on the bottom, we do not get that three. So one third is not equivalent to four sixths. Let's look at two thirds. So when we see the fraction four sixths, let's see, we could divide the numerator by two to get a two on top. And if we divide the denominator by two, do we get a three on the bottom? We do, so two thirds is equivalent to four sixths. Let's check 10 twelfths. Is there anything we can multiply four by on the top to get to 10. There absolutely isn't anything. Four times two is eight, four times three would be 12, so this one would not be equivalent. Moving down to 16 24ths, let's see, we could multiply four on top to get to 16, and if we multiply by four on the bottom, six times four would be 24. So four sixths is equivalent to 16 24ths. So we would circle this one, Looking at 4 ninths, is that going to be equivalent to 4 sixths? Well, let's see. To get to 4 on the top, we would have to divide by 1. So 4 divided by 1 is 4. But is 6 divided by 1 going to be 9? Nope, 6 divided by 1 would be 6. So this one doesn't work. Last one. Is there any way to get to 22 33rds using 4 sixths? So four six four times nothing is going to get us to 22 33rds, so we can cross that out. So it's an easy way to recognize equivalent fractions. You just need to think about your multiplication rule and your division rule, and think about is there anything we can do to both the numerator and the denominator to find any of these fractions. There is a question five on your homework, but you will find that question on your online homework. Please answer that and then submit your homework to your teacher. Please bring your scratch paper tomorrow to turn in. So remember students, what you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator as well.